Okay, we're looking at some of your homework problems from section 3.3. We're looking for the zeros of polynomials, and we're trying to factor and various questions about uh, synthetic division. So I'm on to number five. On number five, it tells us that uh, given that two is a zero of the polynomial, find the remaining zeros. Now this new clue is different from the last segment that I just did. The first four were factorable. As a matter of fact, every time I used synthetic division, I got a remainder of zero, and then it said I could factor it. So it was, I was able to work it that way. But now, it doesn't say the word factor. It says just find the remaining zeros. That's my clue that says I may, ha I may have used the quadratic formula to solve, to solve the uh, quadratic time. All right, all right, so let's that. It says, it says remain other than two. So it tells me that two works. So get me uh, here, and I put my coefficients of all my terms, making sure not to skip any um, values. So nothing is skipped, and then I multiply and add my way across, and I see, yes, that does give me a zero remainder. Now, I could keep looking for zeros by synthetic division, but um, I just know I'm not going to find it this way because this one is not factorable. Synthetic division will only find your rational, kind of nice fraction answers, but it won't find the imaginary answers. So sometimes the answer to an equation is an imaginary solution or an irrational solution. Um, so, like I said, the other four were just nice, rational solutions. Here we start not having that. So it's third degree, so I am looking at three total solutions to account for. We've got one of those, that's two. Now let's find the others. So, like I said, this is a quadratic because when you divide x to the third by x to the first, which synthetic division always divides by an x to the first, it takes it down one degree. So this is a 1x squared minus 8x plus 32 remainder zero quadratic. So I'm going to be using the quadratic formula using a equals 1, b is negative 8, and c is 32. All right, so remember this formula we've used in our past to find these two solutions. The negative of b makes it positive 8. b squared will make that positive 64 minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times the a value. Simplify under the radical. That will be 64 minus... Um, then let's see, 4 times 32 is 128, so 64 minus 128, I'm definitely going to have an imaginary now, I see, because I have a negative number under my radical when I simplify. So that means you've got an i value, and then the square root of 64 is a perfect 8, so you got 8 plus and minus 8i over 2. That should be reduced, both, both these are divided by 2, so that makes it a 4 and a 4. 4 plus and minus 4i. Those are two imaginary solutions. If I were graphing this polynomial like you'll do in the next section, you'll, you'll, you'll see those. Generic, generic, don't show the graph. You'll only have one real solution, and that is, that is the number. Um, what was it? 2 that we used at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. X equals 2. 2 crosses in here will account for the other two imaginary solutions, but we won't see them on the graph. All right, so that's what we fill into the blank on number uh, five. All right, moving on to number six. Um, find the others. Again, that's the question, but it's going to have a little different twist to it. In this case, we're dividing by an imaginary number, five minus i. And whatever it tells me the zero is, that's how I get started and break, start breaking the polynomial down. So one, multiply. Now, whenever you add imaginaries, you add the real part and then add any imaginary parts. Here we just have real parts of um, negative 15 plus 5 to add, and then the minus i bring it down. Then we multiply this times this. Now, this is going to be a little more slow me down. I can't do that in my head. You might have a calculator that will calculate your imaginary numbers. Just make sure you put each of these in a parenthesis if you're going to do it on your calculator. Or even by hand, I'm going to demonstrate that. I would FOIL it, negative i times negative i makes positive i squared. Remember, anytime you see an i squared is negative 1 value. So negative 50, negative 1 makes negative 51, negative 5i and 10i makes positive 5i. 
So that's what goes here, negative 51 plus 5i. As weird as that may seem, that is the uh, answer. Then we add 76 minus 51 will be, what, 25, and then plus the 5i. Then I multiply 5 minus i times 25 plus 5i, just like I did over here. Either foil it or use your calculator, and you should get a positive 130. I'm just going to assume that that happens because it needs to to be a zero remainder. Now, that took it down to an x squared, a quadratic. It is a quadratic, one, two, three terms and a zero, but not a friendly quadratic, uh, not one that we could use the formula on even. So there is another trick that we need to use here, and that's the fact that anytime you have an imaginary, they come in pairs. Like on our last example, on number five, we got an answer of four plus 4i and 4 minus 4i. That always happens with imaginaries. If you get an imaginary, its opposite, opposite sign conjugate will also work. So we use that conjugate theorem um, to keep this going. So, so now we divide again, knowing that this should give us a z, a z remainder. 5 plus i times times 1, 5 plus i. This time when I add, notice the i's will drop out, and negative 10 and 5 is negative 5. Then when I multiply, it's going to be this times this, which distributes negative 5 times each of those. We're making a negative 25 and a negative 5i. And then, like we hoped, would be a zero remainder. So the other remaining zeros, 5, five minus i was given, so we find 5 plus i by the conjugate theorem. We knew that should work. And then the last one you can find by trying something. What works is... Um, as positive 5 actually. Now how do I know that? Um, I need to talk about that more. Uh, one way I know it on this example is um, on this last row I'm down to 1x minus 5 as a factor. You know it was x cubed, x squared, so now I'm down to x to the first. This represents 1x minus 5 as a factor the polynomial x minus 5. So if that is the factor, I know the solution is the opposite sign positive 5. So that's probably most prominent uh, thinking of how I figured that one out. So I'd put positive 5 there. But we do have some other methods um, to look. One way, you might graph this and see if there's any real zeros that you can see on the graph. So 5, because it's a real solution, you should be able to look at the graph of this and see it cross the x-axis at 5. You can find that by looking at the zero. So that's true for any of these polynomial functions. Any of the real solutions should show up on the graph. All right, next up, number seven. Right, same question. For the polynomial, one zero is given. Find the remaining. Find a better sheet of paper. And this one's going to take a lot of paper. <laughs> We've got a fourth degree, so we're looking for a total of four zeros to account for. And negative 9i is given as a zero that works. So I start with that. Now, th now this has skipped x to the third spot, so I put a zero. Then we have x squared. It's skipping x, regular x, so zero. And then the con, the con negative 29. So make sure you're, you've got all your terms accounted for there. Bring down the 1. Multiply is negative 9i. 0 plus negative 9i is negative 9i. Multiply negative 9 times negative 9 will make positive 81, and then i times i is i squared, so you've got 81i squared. But i has a, um, a known value of negative 1, so that's 81 times negative 1, making a big O negative 81, just a number. So 72 minus 81 is negative 9. Then we multiply, and let's see, negative 9 times negative 9, that's 81, and there's only one i there this time, so it's 81i, 0 and 81i is 81i. And then one last time, I hope it's 729, um, I'm going to double check that on my calculator, 9 times 81 is, luckily, 729. And it's negative because negative times positive, but then I've got i times i, i squared going on, which remember always changes its sign, making it a positive 729. So that's all perfect, gives me my zero remainder. Okay, so that gets us going down to an x to the third polynomial. 
Anytime you have a zero remainder, you can build off that line, and I can use my conjugate zero theorem again. If I have a negative 9i, I'm guaranteed that positive 9i also works. That's its conjugate. This would be like zero minus 9i, so this would be zero plus 9i. It's conjugate. So I feel with confidence I can multiply and divide my way across, and I should get um, a zero again, and there it is. Well, once I get to this line, remember that's a quadratic. If you have three terms and a zero, that's 1x squared plus 0x minus 9. When we get to a quadratic, we have options, um, other options to solve. We could solve by continuing to look for zeros. That's one way, okay? and we're going to talk more as we go, but um, you could factor. That's really x squared minus minus nine equals. It factors into x plus three, x minus three, like that. You could find it that way. Or you could throw the nine across the line, and this particular one, the square root property works, and then you can square root both sides, plus and minus three that way. But those are your other two zeros from your quadratic. So your answer to number seven, find the others. You found positive nine i from having the uh, conjugate there. Let me double check in the neck in the end. So we write in 9i, the opposite, and then we have plus three and minus three for our three final answers. It says use a comma to separate. Um, okay, moving on, number eight. Number eight's where we're gonna learn about these other strategies for guessing where the zeros are that I've been kind of uh, teasing about. So in number eight, we learned this uh, possible rational zero theorem uh, method, and that's what we're going to do in number eight is list all the possible zeros. So I kind of know whenever I look at a polynomial, some some guesses, some things that might work. So like on this one, it's asking us on a part, what might work? What are the possible rational zeros? Now remember, this only picks up the nice zeros. It doesn't pick up imaginaries, and it doesn't pick up irrational, like square root of seven, if that's a solution. But it helps because a lot of times it is a rational zero answer. So um, the possible rational zeros is the P over Q rule, and you can hear more about that in your notes. But it's the factors of the constant, so the factors of 10, divided by Q is the factor of the lead coefficient, 1. So you list anything that will go into 10 evenly, which is 1, 2, 5, and 10. Those are the factors of 10 anything that goes into it evenly. And then the lead coefficient here is just a one, so that won't um, make a lot of fractions. It'll just be one over one, two over one, five over one, 10 over one, you know, since we're just dividing by one. And then it could be positive or negative of any of those values. We don't know the sign if it's positive or negative. So I know if I'm looking for the, uh, the, the zeros or the factors of this, I know they have to come from this list if they're going to be a rational zero or a factorable polynomial. So that gives us um, um, answer B for that part. B part now says figure out which ones work. So, work. so we start list, and they can't be all of them. You know, it's not A. There can only be at most three, third degree, so you're looking for three solutions. So, um, you know, I'm thinking, thinking C or D. I'm thinking I'll start with one and see if we we'll see if it works. I'll know to try maybe that one to eliminate the possibilities. But I'll, I'll go through my list and zero, zero remainder. You know, that's the goal. Nope, that was not it. Remainder four. So it's not one. I feel pretty sure it's D. But I'll go on and try it if one and use my coefficients and synthetic division method and multiply and add my way across and look how that is beautiful so negative one works now to be thorough i look for the other two and i'm guessing it's probably going to be those numbers but you'd start through this list and just try to find the three there's um, what eight possibilities only three of them work so your guess is as good as mine and um, you know as far as that goes but um i kind of tell from the choices there um, what the possibilities are to narrow it down even further. And they're the three zeros that work. Then lastly, it says now write it in factor form. If you know these to be the zeros, you just change the sign and put an X on it to see it in factor form. And then that's your answer, final answer. All right, hope that helps. We'll pick back up on number nine in the next video.